Okay, here we are. I'm gonna do my best to talk through this, but we're out here, or I'm out here with a couple people. It's just a chance opportunity here. This drone is built by Momentum for Aero, you can see here, and it's purpose built for the autonomous drone hub that Aero has, which if you look closely here, you can see the uh, QR code. And so this drone hub is designed so that the drone can land anywhere on the platform and a arm uh, actually comes out and grips onto the uh, left and right side. You can see the metal uh, areas there. It'll grip onto that, unlock the, uh, the battery and the payload you can see here pull it out and change it out the significance of that is if you uh, needed uh, a new battery supply you know of course the, the battery may have went dead or is going dead obviously uh, and you may want to change out the payload in this case uh, we're experimenting with um, software defined radio so you may have a different software defined radio package this was just kind of rapidly prototyped here uh, you can see there is a re-terminal which has a cm4 raspberry pi board inside battery is uh, above it screen is protected below it is a lilio t halo uh, 802.11 ah compatible uh, interface there that is uh, well has a ethernet cable going up to the cm4 and the yellow antenna you may remember uh, me using in the previous video gets the 900 megahertz link back to the ground T Halo, and then the other antenna is just uh, one of those an antennas uh, that come with, I, I think, typically the Hack RF hooked to the RTL SDR, which you can see. And, you know, so the goal is uh, basically just over the T Halo link, see how far the connection can be made. Uh, what kind of uh, speeds, which I'm just now reminding myself yet again, I think I forgot to put uh, some other tools to test bandwidth, but uh, we'll probably test, uh, test out Kismet too and use the internal Bluetooth on the CM4, maybe do some other experimentations. Yeah, so this is the drone here. It can of course uh, carry quite a bit, fly for an extended period of time. And what I'll do is, uh, I'll probably get some video of the drone flying so you can just kind of get an idea of what it looks like in the air. And then I'll jump back to my screen uh, like I did in a previous video. Just kind of screen record and see see what we can actually see in the spectrum across that uh, 802.11ah link. All right, stay tuned. All right, here we go. So I'm on the laptop side now just screen recording and it's kind of a race against... Um, the weather here the rain's coming in but the drone is going up i'm already pinging across the t halo network you can see and what's going to happen is the drone is uh, going to do a figure eight around the flight area here and so i'm just maintaining a ping right now uh, i could show i'm also in the um the cm4 here well let me see the uh, pings i'm ping times i'm looking at but I'm already SSH'd in to the Pi that's on the drone, the payload there, the Dragon Modular payload. I'm going to try and just see what happens if we start the SigDigger server side piece up, which in this case is going to do the digital signal processing on the drone side. And so my hope is uh, there's still some um, probably tweaks that need to happen here, but across that T-Halo link, the, uh, the FFT and waterfall updates should come across and it shouldn't use as much uh, bandwidth as, uh, you know, full IQ data coming back. I'm still trying to figure out the multicast deal here. I'm not sure if I'm actually even putting the right address. 101 is me. Uh, the host is 100 on port 28002, which will get us access to the RTL SDR. So I'm starting it right now. Right away, I'm going to just... Uh, lower the FPS a little bit. It's actually doing much, much better. The, the drone is in the air, and we can see that um, I can tune the spectrum here. I've asked the developer about uh, making this to where this warning will just appear uh, once, and, and, and we can accept it so it doesn't keep coming back. Let's see where we're at here on um, some gain. So we are now... 
Uh, here, if I've got to, I'll lower this a little bit more for right now. Just to, just to stop this, try and stop that warning from coming. I'll lower the uh, gain a little bit. So we are looking at the spectrum with the, in this case, the digital signal processing, the heavy lifting kind of happening at the edge on the drone. And you know what? I'm just going to leave this here for right now because uh, it seems to still run. I've just set it a one meg wide bandwidth. I could lower the gain probably and, and, and mess with some other settings here. But we're doing this over the T-Halo 802.11ah link. Drones, it looks like it's coming back down to land now, but we're maintaining a connection here and we're able to see uh, the spectrum. We're probably going to take it out on a longer flight, but I could push uh, a lot of what's happening here on the uh, Pi, say, in screen to the background. So in case I lost connection, it would still be running. Uh, we'll probably start up Kismet as well and just show that the Bluetooth inside the CM4 could, of course, do some survey stuff for, uh, for Kismet. But uh, drone's on the ground now, so I'm going to uh, break and I'll come back uh, for a video where we'll try and test the, uh, the distance of the link. All right, so I'm going to record again uh, just a kind of a distance test here. Waiting for the drone to take off. I have uh, a ping going across from my laptop to the uh, re terminal, or well, really the Pi 4 that's on the drone. And you know, we're going to see what kind of uh, distance we can get here. I'm just mainly focused on the ping right now. I am SSH'd into it as well. And I guess I could start a, a screen here of, let me see, CLI dev serve. IF equals 10.0.0. Um, let me think, let me think. 100 on the Pi. That should push it to the background in case we lose a connection. If I do a control A, control D, I'm disconnected. So we got all the same settings here. That for, uh, didn't uh, save there. I needed to save that. And I'm going to do 101, my laptop's IP. We've still got a ping going to it. And we have the spectrum coming across. Let's see. Uh, so we're on 93 megahertz here. We've got uh, pretty good ping. We'll lower this. We can. Let's see what else can we do. So, so we're half a kilometer away. And we're still getting the spectrum across. We can, uh, I'm going to SSH in to at 10.0.0.100. Now I might be pushing it a little bit here, so let me, oh, there we go. So what I'll do is I'll try and start Kismet. And I just turned the spectrum off for a second here. Let's do a screen kismet. And we'll control A, control D. So we'll disconnect here. We should be able to. Okay, dot uh, 100, 2501. So we're loading up uh, kismet now, which is, um, I'm looking at it over the link. Let me just see, let's do data sources. I'll just really quickly, Bluetooth, enable. Let's see, blank that out for a second. I just wanna see if we get some packets across. There's probably not much Bluetooth out there, but we are running um, Kismet. So I'm gonna close out of the window. We're still pinging, how far out is it? Oh, can you go? You, can you go a kilometer or no? Uh, not, not very well here. Ah, okay, okay. So we're at a half a kilometer, and we've got a good ping, and we still can get the uh, the spectrum across. So yeah, I, I uh, yeah, and the drone is coming back this way. So yeah, so good connection. 
the entire time I'm pretty confident that you know even further out we would be fine considering the fact that on the ground uh, I was able to get one kilometer between laptop and T halo so all right I think we're I think we're good